All right, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mac, Play Fast Football. Today I'm going to do a quick video on some of the nose movements that we are looking at in our tight front during spring football, and I'll give you a little reason why we're looking into those things and what we're trying to do. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline Replay System we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them the last five or six years. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, great customer service, make sure you check out GameStrat. Dome Headwear is the hat company we use, Play Fast Football and Bishop Kenny. You completely design your own hat, customizable, change the enclosure, snapback, fitted, Velcro, change the style of the hat, change the color of the panels, button on top, everything is customizable. Every hat has a story. Make sure you check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods company we use for our coaches gear, uh, practice gear, sideline gear, our uniforms are distributed from them, player spirit packs, fan gear, everything we do with our cloth is through Baker Sports, check them out. Just Play, which is the playbook software we use, best play drawing tool on the market, we use it for some of our presentations, I use it for my Patreon site, All right, so if you're looking to take your program to another level, make sure you use Just Play software. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, get thousands of reps without needing a partner, they attach right to your uh, to your racks in your weight room. They're perfect for in-season, off-season, striking development, striking violently, eliminating somebody holding a bag and, and worrying about the resistance that the person is having to provide with the bag. It's just you and the ultimate striking machine. So make sure you check them out. And then X and O Notebook, as we uh, are going through our meetings, it's one of the things that I think about all the time when I am putting schemes up on a board through our Just Play app or showing huddle clips or um, sharing things with the kids. Uh, it would be nice to have a place where they could keep notes, take notes along with the stuff that I'm doing. So if they wanted to draw it so that they could see it, if they felt like writing things down uh, led them to learn things better, I would like to have a completely customizable notebook where I can design the notebook the way I want to, the templates inside, the note uh, pages on the side, or full pages of notes, or note pages on the side of the template where they could draw uh, you know, a formation and then based on their position they could put the keynotes down that they had to put on the side. It's got our logo on the front, maybe our schedule. It looks professional, it looks clean, and we spend so much time preparing for our meetings. Why not spend more time making sure the kids and coaches have a way to get everything out of those meetings? So one of the great things about having uh, spring practice and, and very fortunate to be in Florida where we are allowed to have, uh, we'll have about 18 17 or 18 practices and then we'll play a game against two other schools. One of the great things about that is it gives you a chance to take the things that you've looked at, studied, researched in the off season, and it gives you a chance to now implement them in a setting where there's really no damage done, right? So we're really not preparing in the spring for a complete game plan. We're not really preparing to um, put in a game plan for the two teams that we are playing in the Jamboree. What we're doing is we're working on our schematics getting better. We're practicing against ourselves. So when we look at some of the things that we want to install, all right, or some of the things that I've studied or researched over the last couple months or have gone to clinics or talked to people, now we get a chance to look at them, see what we like, see the tweaks we need to make, and then figure out what's going to be best for us moving towards the regular season where we now are talking about specific game plans for each team, right? So one of the things we're looking at is getting some movement from the nose. So running some game from the nose in our tight front, three high structure. And one of the reasons for that is when most people see tight front, they are gonna scheme and they are gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna draw up their beaters to the tight front, assuming that there's a nose and two four eyes. And most of the movement that comes from odd front teams is usually adding a fourth linebacker, or sorry, adding a linebacker as a fourth from somewhere whether it's a full slant angle and sending somebody off the edge or an interior plug with an inside backer, the one thing in odd front that you lose that you would gain in a four-man front is a lot of those two-man games that you can run to disrupt locking schemes. So one of the things that we're looking at in the offseason is finding a way to run some games with our nose. So what we're trying right now in the spring is we are working on a game between nose and the four-eye where the four-eye is the penetrator, all right, and the four eye is looking to occupy the front side A gap. So the four eye is going to be the penetrator going first, and he's looking to occupy the front side A gap, which means he's got to read the block of the guard. Right? So if the guard comes at him, or if the guard shows him his face or his teeth, he has to cross face that block. Right? So if we got a zone scheme, 
So if this was a two back seam and let's say we've got some type of front side zone scheme, all right, where they're working it, let's say here, all right, and, and they're working maybe some type of split flow, right? Well, normally in the zone scheme, they're going to try and double the four eye to a backer, whether it's an outside backer, inside backer, whatever their rules are, whatever their scheme is. So now what this gives us a chance is the four eye gets a chance to work inside. And when he gets the zone scheme, he's going to cross face as a guard, right? So hopefully the guard is occupied by the movement, all right, of the four eye going back inside. If the guard is not used to seeing the four eye move, then sometimes what we're going to get is the four eye clean across the guard's face, all right? And then hopefully if they are not full chaining the whole thing, hopefully when the guard does that, the center is occupied by the nose, all right, even though the nose is going to move, which is going to disrupt the blocking scheme, right? So the four eye on any blocks out is going to have to cross face. Anything that goes away, so zone away, gap schemes, the four eye is going to have to try and chase that guard. And if he can't cross the guard's face, obviously with the guard moving away, then he needs to use the guard's body to occupy the A-gap, right? So there's two ways to play a gap, your body, the offensive player's body. If we're moving to the A-gap and that player is moving away from us, we need to be able to put his body in that A-gap. The toughest one for us, all right, and this is where we are trying to figure out based on formations and schemes, the toughest one for us is when we get pulls and we're looping the nose away from the pull and we get the back block of the center. Because now when we go to chase that guard, that center has that back block right now. So now we got to work on inside movement by the four eye, center blocking back, we might have to hump. If we can't beat that skinny, we might have to hump the top of that back block to recreate a body over the top since we're moving the nose away, right? So the nose will go second, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the nose versus run schemes, all right? We're trying to get the nose to go second and be in the B gap versus run schemes. And the reason we're trying to do that is if the four eye occupies an A gap and the nose occupies a B gap, we've essentially kept the same gap responsibility, okay? So we've essentially kept our A gap, B gap premise, and our linebackers can fit the runs off of that, right? So now what will happen is we, we will still keep C gaps open to each side so that if we got a front side gap scheme, rather than trying to get the mic to insert in a B gap with the nose going around, all right, because of all that clutter and nose movements, the nose, so when we went down, and this was a drive block, we would cross face to the drive block. The nose would then try to fit tight off of that inside the tackle so that the mic can work to spill the first thing he sees in the C-gap because the mic's rules is A to C. So Flo Adam, he's going to work C-gap. Now the wheel's going to take care of the backside A first, which will be the A-gap away from the nose. Well, we're moving the nose, and we're bringing the four eye into the front side A-gap. All right, so now the wheel knows that the A-gap that's going to be open for him that he has to take care of first is going to be the A gap on his side, right? Because he knows that the nose game is running strong. He knows that we're working the game strong. So he knows that it's going to be the weak side. When we play our base defense, the A gap that is open for the two inside backers is off of the block of the center. So our nose lags off the block of the center. Okay, so they, the backers know that the center is going to, the nose is going to occupy the backside A gap off the block of the center, and we're going to clean up the front side A gap. Well, when we put a movement in, all right, like this, we now know that if the nose is going strong, we know it's going to be the weak side A-gap that's open. Okay, so it kind of defines that A-gap a little bit quicker for the backers, and what we're currently working through right now in spring ball is how we fit that, how fluent is it, what does it look like for the backers on the movement. All right, what we're going to allow the nose to do is if he gets pass sets on his movement, we're going to allow him to keep going off the edge. All right, and, and the reason for that is we feel like it's a little bit more of a natural movement if he gets a pass set for him to continue to rush off the edge rather than trying to snap back inside of that pass set of the tackle. Now, that's what we're trying to teach. It's feel versus real. In reality, all right, what we're trying to look at on game film now from practice film, what we're trying to look at is based on run schemes, pass schemes, when a nose loops, where is he ending up more often than not? All right, if he's ending up in a B gap more often than not, well then, if it's working for us, maybe we'll leave it that way. If his path is taking him too wide, then we're going to have to work on him on the difference in his movements between run blocks, pass sets. Right? So right now, it's trial and error for us. We're trying to see what works best. We're trying to see how effective the movement of the four eye is. Where are we gaining the nose versus run schemes? Is he doing anything for us in passing schemes? Is it presenting any problems for the offense and how they are blocking their run game? Right, so we are currently working in both ways. All right, so we've got it to where we're bringing the nose 
behind a strong side four I, and then we're also bringing those behind a weak side four I, right? So right now it's a call for us. It's a call that we are making, and we are declaring whether we want it strong or weak. What we're trying to figure out is, do we like it to the back, away from the back? So in other words, based on where the back was set, and based on the runs we're getting from where the back is set, do we find out that we like the stunt more with the nose looping to the side of the back or the nose looping away from the back? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our practice film from the spring. We're going to see the runs that we saw with the stunts that we're on. We're going to see where we gained the most advantage of the four eye moving inside. All right. And then we're going to see where we gained the nose. And then we're going to see the runs that obviously we didn't fit or had a hard time fitting. And then we're going to try and build the game plan in to where now we are going to let the linebackers move the nose based on where the back is set week by week. So depending on the runs that we're seeing and where the back is set, now we can make one call, all right, and then on the field, the backers will make the strong or weak call. So rather than me call it strong or weak or field or boundary, all right, we can let, based on what we're seeing and what types of runs we're seeing, we can let the backers make that choice. So it becomes a choice call for us, so the movement becomes up to the backers to tell the nose and the four eyes whether we want to loop the nose strong or loop the nose weak, right? So it's trial and error right now, trying to feel it out, trying to feel the process. The reason behind it is to get some movement out of our base tight front without bringing a fourth. All right, one of the things we looked at was possibly running this game and plugging a linebacker in the opposite A gap, right? So maybe if I ran this game on the strong side here and I plugged the mic in the weak side A gap, and now that cleans up both A and B gaps and it lets the wheel run C to C both ways, right? Because our linebackers are active, we like them running. So that's one of the things that we looked at. We decided that in the spring, we are not gonna plug anybody and we're gonna let these two kids who are two of our better football players, we're gonna let them run and see if they can clean the fits up based on open windows, all right? And, and based on, on fitting open windows, scraping closed windows, or scraping doors, however you want to look at it, fitting an open door, scraping a closed door, however you want to look at it, whatever your terminology is, we're going to see if our linebackers that run really well, if they can fit these runs off of this movement, where really, for me, two things I'm really trying to see. What are we getting out of the four-eye movement? Are we gaining anything out of the four-eye movement? Are, are we causing any disruption? What are we getting out of the nose movement? All right, is it effective based on a body type of the nose? Do we have a nose that's better for that type of movement? Okay, so again, trial and error, working on things in the spring, trying to figure out ways that we can use the nose more in our tight front and the four eyes more in our tight front because what we have found is in our tight front when it's static, people are constantly drawing up the beaters, drawing up the things that they like. So we want to be able to present some movement in our tight front, be able to make sure that we can uh, do a little bit more out of our tight front. We do pressure, we have five man pressures and six man pressures and some other things, so we don't just sit in the tight front, but always trying to find a way to protect our base. So that's what we're doing in spring football. We get a chance to work on it now. Here's the, that's the area where you want to look at it. You want to get your reps on film, get your practice reps where there is really no harm involved because we're not worried about a game plan. It's not like this is part of a specific game plan and that week we need to make sure that it's right or we're going to waste reps. All right, we don't have a game for another three and a half weeks and when we do play it's a jamboree. Not really concerned with the overall game plan. We're trying to get our defense better, trying to get reps, trying to get our kids comfortable. And then we're trying to figure out what our kids can do, right? So we're trying to figure out which four eyes can move which four eyes are better at moving, which noses can move, who's better at just being a two-gap nose, and who's better moving a little bit. So trial and error for us, feel versus real, see what it looks like, what we think it looks like, and then see what it actually does in live settings, all right? So hopefully this helps you guys out if you're a tight front team or an odd front team, uh, and it helps you figure out how to build some movement in that's more than just your standard five-man, six-man pressures, all right? So appreciate you guys for following Play Fast. If you are not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe, turn the notifications on, ring the bell. You know every time we do a video, every time we go on YouTube Live, I may jump on YouTube Live this weekend. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the content, don't like the content, leave a comment. Every comment that I see, I try to respond to on my end. Uh, this Thursday, a week from tonight, we will have another virtual clinic going on. There's going to be a slight adjustment to the schedule. Uh, supposed to have John Walford, NFL quarterback, speaking, but um, NFL offseason has popped up again. And John will be busy next Thursday uh, doing some things um, with his NFL uh, 
career, so um, I'm going to have to replace John. I don't know what I'm going to replace him with, but there will be a clinic Thursday night, next Thursday, May 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's a Zoom call. Everyone is recorded. Everyone that I record, everybody that attends the clinic gets a copy of the link. We've done four of them so far. All of them have been really good. People that have been there have enjoyed them. We've also been able to send a link. So if you're interested in that, make sure you email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. Again, I don't know exactly who the speaker is going to be yet. I've got to book one in the next week. Uh, John has agreed to speak in July when the NFL dies down uh, because right now it's just too hectic for him, and I really want him to speak. He's going to be a great speaker, really knowledgeable guy, great football player, great quarterback. So I definitely want people to hear that. It's just not conducive right now with the NFL schedule. So, uh, again, next Thursday there will be a clinic. Look for it on Twitter or the next YouTube I do. Look for me telling you who that's going to be. Not sure if it's going to be offense, defense, position-based, scheme-based. Not sure yet. I'll find a speaker. I'll fill it up. If you're interested in that speaker, email sting8740 at gmail.com. Thanks for everything you do for Play Fast. Hope everything is going well out there. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you guys next time.